Uh, I noticed that, uh, yeah, I remember that you use um, your computer. <laughs> um, really, really nice to see you guys. Uh, and now I'm very happy to welcome um, our next presenter of the day, uh, Ms. Sara Batel, who is going to talk to you about gamification in the classroom um, and getting to teach vocabulary. Um, so you are in good hands. <laughs> Okay, good afternoon everybody. Thank you so much for being so many of you to sign up to this workshop. So it's actually the opposite uh, of the title. There will be no chit chat. We will go straight to the point. I'm completely skipping the theory. I will just try to share with you a catalog of games uh, that I'm doing in my classes. So we will go straight to a point. Uh, I'm sure a lot of you will know uh, some, of the, some of the games because a few of them are quite classic and uh, should I introduce myself? So my name is Sarah Badel. I uh, teach French in Exupéry and I'm also the head of French in secondary. So the games that I'm going to present uh, can be used for primary and secondary as well. You will see, I will, uh, I will specify every time. Slime. Oh, you do it. Okay. Um, no, slide, you skip one. Okay, so the purpose of this presentation is, as I said, to give you ideas of many games slash activities that you can do in class and to spice up your lessons with dynamic uh, activities because we all know the benefits of uh, implementing games uh, in, our, uh, in our lessons. Why play games in a language class? So games are an active way of learning vocabulary. They are also very convenient because it's an activity but super easy to differentiate. So if you have many different levels in your classroom, as we all do, we, we all have many different levels, so it's easy to adapt uh, and to give different versions according to the different levels that you have. They are also super handy to avoid repetitions. Uh, in the sense that different games can be used to work on the same vocabulary list. So instead of doing the same activity over and over again to teach the exact same vocabulary list, you can uh, vary and use many different games, even though you're still working on the same thing. A uh, game can also be used as a recap. So you can start your lesson with a game to make sure that uh, they can remember what you learned last time or to also see what they can remember. So I often uh, start, um, uh, start my uh, lesson with a game. So it can be games like Quizlet or Kahoot, but we all know so I'm not introducing them, and other games that I will show. And also, of course, to consolidate vocabulary. So either to introduce new vocabulary or to consolidate vocabulary. Uh, here's a list of games I will present. So I will present the team game, a classic, snakes and ladders, another classic, uh, a few games with a timer. So I will present uh, three different games. So you will see some using uh, paper, others using using the board here, a board game to use connectors. Um, by connectors, I mean uh, connecting words like however, nevertheless, this kind of uh, this kind of words which are usually for more advanced learners. A game to work on description using music, drama games, so I would get you a little bit active as well, and online uh, games. Hmm? <laughs> um, team game. So the team game is uh, for primary and middle school and why not for high school as well. I mean, I've done that with a grade 11 and grade 10, uh, 12, sorry. None of them died. It's totally fine. You can use it with any level. It's also super quick to prepare. So I will show you an example. All the games that I am uh, showing you today, except for one, are super quick to prepare because I don't think we should spend hours building a game that's gonna last 10 minutes uh, for most of them. So we need to be time, uh, time, uh, time efficient. So it can be done with a PowerPoint, personally what I prefer because it's time efficient, so it's five minutes, or with flashcards. And 
it's something which is important when you do this game is to pay attention to not place too many new words. So for instance, if you use that in primary, I would say three, four new words. Prime, uh, secondary, you can extend a little bit more, but you can't give too many new words at once because that would be too confusing. So next slide, please. So that's an example, as you can see, in terms of prep, uh, about one minute. <laughs> <laughs> so there are pictures about instruction. So that's usually for the first unit that I do with total beginners. So I am listening, I am reading, I am standing up, I am waiting. And next slide. I make one picture disappear. And so the students need to identify which one is missing. So you can do that with uh, so many uh, so many different lists of uh, vocabulary. You can carry on. Uh, it's just uh, as a few slides. Uh, Showing it. <laughs> okay, well, it doesn't matter. So, so you get the idea. So when you create your PowerPoint, you just animate one picture that will disappear. Then next slide, you animate a different picture, so on and so forth. So with secondary, usually what I, uh, what I do, you have like uh, five pictures. So with complete beginners, that's what I use in terms of numbers. I could use maybe one more picture, but more than that, then it's defeating the point because you will lose too much time. Okay. So yeah, prep time, three minutes. Uh, so, and I would use that to introduce the vocabulary and also at every lesson for a little while to make sure what they can remember. And then I would do different versions to work on the same vocabulary list. Next slide, please. Snakes and ladders. So another classic. Again, not too long to prepare because I'm sure you understood. I don't like spending too long preparing games. Uh, and it can be done on any topics. It can be played in teams or with the whole class. So if you have a small group, if you have 30 kids, it's going to be out of control. But if you have 10 or 12 kids, you can do that. In that case, you split the classroom into two teams. Um, each turn, um, a team will say the answer and you will move on uh, your token um, on the board. So as a, an example, you can find templates online. You can find blank templates, make your own. So that's a little bit more editing for something like that. Uh, this is not mine as I don't teach English. I just took uh, something uh, random. And uh, so a lot of them are already made online. Otherwise, you get it uh, a blank and you do your own. You save it on your drive and you can uh, uh, use it all the years. You can print it out. You can split the kids into groups and then everybody would get their own bone games. Uh, it's important that you teach them all the um, sentences that they would need to play this game, to make sure they speak in French, in English, in German, whatever you want. It's my turn, will the die, I don't know the answer. These kind of things prior to make sure it's a more authentic uh, experience. So you need, you start here, you need to go all the way there. If you fall on the head of a snake, you go down. If you get at the bottom of a ladder, you go up. And uh, the, first, the first person to reach uh, the finishing square, Win the game. If you have questions, please tell me because I, I, uh, I'm mm -hmm. rushing a little bit. <laughs> yes, do you need a dice for that? Yes, you need a dice. So what you can do again to avoid prep, <laughs> if you, if, right? yes, if you allow your student to have uh, phones in class, then they use an app on the on their phone uh, online uh, online dice. What do they what, what do they exactly do with the question? Do they answer them or? Yes. Okay. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So um, so they need to answer them. So this one. Uh, I've never used it. <laughs> so what's your favorite food? And then you would say what your favorite food is. So what you can do, because like if you have many teams working, you can't be exactly sure what they're going to say. So you can have a stronger student in the team who's going to act as a referee to say, oh, you can't say that or whatever. Or you can have a sheet with answers listed in advance. So this way they can check if the answer is correct. But could be, uh, but then that's more prep. So maybe, uh... <laughs> games with a timer. So game numero one, 
uh, number one, sorry, with pieces of paper. So the idea is to stress them out a little bit mm -hmm. with a timer and they love it. So you can set your timer on, let's say, let's say one minute. You can play this game with the whole class or in teams. And how you're going to do that, you will take pieces of paper and you're going to write down one word per piece of paper. So it can be anything. If you're working on countries, it can be uh, names of countries, numbers, one, uh, write down numbers on the pieces of paper. So let's say I'm a, I, I volunteer as a student. I'm here. I've got one minute. Timer is there. I'm stressed. And I'm taking one piece of paper and I have to read out uh, what's there. So of course, you don't write down words. So if I have numbers, let's say with beginners, I have number 10, I have to say 10, so on and so forth. And I have to say as many words, as many papers as I can in one minute. Then another team will come, will do the same thing, and we see who did uh, the most numbers of papers. Again, in terms of prep, we're quite, uh, we're quite close to nothing. Because you can just like take pieces of paper like, and, do it, uh, and do it super quick. Uh, it's quite engaging because uh, they like the stress that's coming out of it. Also, they stand in front of the class if you do it in this format. So it can be a student coming um, and everybody's watching. Or again, if you have a big class, you split people in teams and then they do, uh, they do it per table. And at the end, let's say after 10 minutes, you ask team A, uh, who got the highest number? Team B, who got the highest number? So, uh, so on and so forth. So it's, uh, it's quite flexible. Any questions? Yes. I was just thinking about how to flex strategy. And I think I could do also, for example, on the card, there could be the explanation. And then the students have to say what that is on that explanation. Could that work as well? It would work as well, or, or even to go faster for you in terms of preparation, but it depends. Uh, it depends on what you want them to say. Write, uh, I don't know, just write molecule, mm -hmm. and they have to give the definition. Ah, yeah, yeah. yeah, you could do it like that as well. So it would be easier, faster for mm -hmm. you to prepare. Uh, game number two on a board. So instead of having uh, pieces of paper and uh, potentially destroying the planet, uh, you can display <laughs> pictures on the board and it's exactly the same idea. So again, one minute, everybody's stressed. Uh, uh, they like the simulation. And so one student has one minute to get their teammates to guess as many words or to make as many sentences possible. So this one is interesting because as opposed to uh, pieces of paper, it's difficult to write long sentences on these pieces of paper. So maybe this one would be more appropriate. This one is better for more advanced learners. So I have a picture in the next slide. That doesn't look very nice, but this is their work. So um, we did that together. So sorry, it's in French. They had to find adjectives um, from verbs, so to create adjectives from verbs, and then to associate it with a TV program. So they had to do this thing. That was a classic activity. They did that. One student came to the board, wrote it down, and then after that, we had teams again. So in this class, I had maybe eight or nine students. So it was a small class. I split them into two teams. A volunteer comes here and will guess their team, um, will get the team to guess as many TV programs as possible. So the kid's gonna be there. Okay, so it's a TV show that will give a lot of information about what's going on in the world. And the teammate will say, OK, uh, news program. It's, um, it's a program that is advertising products uh, that's trying to create new needs. OK, an ad, one more point. And again, in one minute. So for more advanced learners, in terms of prep, well, the kids did it. And uh, all you need is a timer. Questions? No? No questions? Okay, so again, a third version, uh, so exactly the same idea. So with the pictures, uh, these sentences um, are here to help the weaker students. So the first 
activity was for students to match these pictures with these sentences. So I would take a marker and they would give me the answer. So, okay, this one's number one, number two, number three. And then they would do the same thing, but they would have this, uh, this prop to help them. It was actually, uh, because it's French, they had to conjugate uh, uh, the verbs and then they had to use uh, gerund to make more complex sentences. So it was a bit more elaborated. Um, it wasn't just reading that was there. They had to do a lot of, uh, of, uh, of things, not just that. So matching first, and then again, trying to uh, get the teammates to guess. So for instance, um, I am reading books while Taking a shower. I know it's weird, but why not? <laughs> and so they will have to say, oh, that's picture two and picture five. One point, because we were working on this uh, grammar point. Mm -hmm. Oh, I am sending messages uh, while playing on video games. Picture six and picture seven. OK, another point. As many as possible for one minute. Tell me if it's not clear, because uh, I understand <laughs> that this it's a bit abstract. <laughs> it's clear. It's clear? Mm -hmm. Awesome. Okay, so again to use connectors, so with intermediate uh, students, so this one is super useful, I would say, because we all know, I mean, if we are language teachers, but this is the use of connectors that would make the difference between like a low intermediate student and an upper intermediate student. So all these words, like, however, nevertheless, in my point of view, I beg to differ, all these kind of expressions that kids don't think of using because they, they are used to writing or speaking in a more casual way, so they won't think of using that. But with that, they got no choice. So, um, so the way it works, um, so no, before that, I should say it is a game that's ideal to have debates in class. So, again, for B, B1, B2 learners, that's perfect allows the students to organize their thoughts because they will have to follow this structure and it can be differentiated per level. Um, I will show you how it can be differentiated. So the idea is you have a bank of topics which is sorted out uh, per level. So I have topic for A2, topic for B1, topic for B2. Students will take a card, for instance, this one says, is internet an ideal way to find information? That's a question. Then they will have each of them to elaborate their thoughts using connectors. The same for connectors. I have connectors for A2, B1, B2. So I would give them as random. So each student will have five or six cards of connectors. And they will be forced to put them like that in a certain order to answer this question. OK? Um, so they are sorted out to level. Maybe Andres, if you can show the. Hmm? You're done I'm done in five minutes. No, 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 no. I have double period. Oh ah, yeah, yeah, sorry. sorry. Oh, no. <laughs> Next no, slide. It's not. Next slide, please. So you will see, this one is a template for A2. So using one, two, three, four connectors. This one is a template for B2, so you can see using many more uh, connectors. So it works great. It works great. I'm having uh, advanced um, students of French. I'm harassing them with the use of connectors. And so far, that's the best way I found. So this game, I didn't design it myself. I found it online. In terms of prep, it takes time, uh, but I think it's totally worth it. So if you guys will, uh, will want to Take a look at it. Uh, you can. All the different. Uh, well, no, I only have A2 and B2 here. And yeah, I mean, for the question, you don't even have to use the question cards that are provided with it. Like, I mean, I adapted to the topic that we are doing in class. So we were studying uh, the French protest, for instance, which is quite a thing. And uh, so I would like show the question on the board give them uh, connectors according to the level at random and i'd be like okay so you are v2 you are v1 so i would give the right templates according to the level i would give them few minutes to make choices on what connector should go first 
to elaborate their thoughts, and then they would say their arguments. So either the student would say the entire piece in one go, or they could start with just saying here, the other student takes over, and then here, the other student takes over with their own board, and vice versa. So either you get a student to say everything with all the connectors at once, like a kind of monologue, or you get students to answer each other. And then, for instance, if someone is saying, I believe that potatoes are amazing, and then the next student is like, has to start the sentence with, uh, I don't know, also, even if they didn't want to say something like that, they will have to add that uh, to the speech of the person before. So I love it. And uh, I think you can make uh, you can make your own. It will take a little while, but it's uh, it's possible and it's something to use that you're gonna use uh, quite uh, quite often. Okay, drama games. So I love drama games because students love drama games too, and there is no prep. So that's a win-win situation uh, again. So I'm sure that most of you know this one. It's quite a classic. So you get the student in a circle, um, and students have to say, well, it depends on the topic, either a word or a sentence, and associate an action with it. And research has shown that when you say something associated with a gesture, it will stay in your mind more easily. So I don't know, if you're teaching in primary uh, fruit, uh, if you want to teach, uh, I don't know, an apple, the fact of doing that at the same time will stick in your mind more. So it's a good way if you associate new words with gestures. So for molecules, uh, good luck. <laughs> I don't know. Uh, and it's repetition because um, you have to repeat what all the players before you have said. So you need to make your own sentence or say your own word and repeat everybody else. And then if you, if you make a mistake, you're out of the game. So the idea is to finish with just like one or two students at the end and uh, to see who's winning. Maybe we should try it. Yeah, volunteers? Yeah. <laughs> uh, we need more. <laughs> Thank you, Annette. Okay. Uh, should we take fruit? One more. This yeah. one is easy. Okay. okay. I am an apple. So you need to say yeah. you are an apple and you say you are. You are an apple and I am a banana. Oh, you are a banana. Yeah, 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 uh, you're working on grammar as well, because you have to say you are. You can't say I am while pointing at somebody else, for instance. So, yeah, if you have 30 kids, split them into groups, and you walk around, and you're making sure that they're doing the same. And, uh, yeah, thank you. I will actually stay here, because I will introduce uh, uh, the other game. So this one is a bit more complicated, even though there's no prep. Um, so I call this game, freeze and give your turn. I don't know what it's called, um, uh, I made it up. So students are in line watching while two are on stage. You don't need a stage, you just need a space. And you will give a context as a teacher. I'm gonna give students a place and an emotion. They will have to act out a scene out of that. And then a student can shout at any time, freeze. So people on stage will freeze. We will tap on the shoulder of one of them, move that student and take their place. And it will have, again, an emotion and a place. So let's say, for instance, uh, let's see. you are the supermarket. <laughs> you are super stressed. And you super have action. And don't hesitate to go. 
I didn't think of the people online, maybe it was too far. Do we have more? Yes. Uh, so, drama games, excellent, get students so engaged, like I run a drama improvisation improv club in a, in a former school while well, I was doing this one uh, in, uh, in English, not in French, and kids of primary were loving it. And I think for secondary students, it's totally fine. You just pick a different, uh, different topic. You tell them that a moment of shame always goes by super quick, and off they go. And uh, after five or 10 minutes, they're fine. I mean, they usually don't like what's new. They always think that what's new is rubbish. But if you for them, uh, for them, not to encourage them, sorry. <laughs> if you encourage them and if you lead the example first, I think it's fine and, he, and it's an amazing way to, uh, um, to place a lot of vocabulary because if it's example, we are the emotions and we had all key sentences that could have been learned where while shopping or while going to the movies or whatever, you can adapt to, to, uh, to, the, uh, to the level of your learners and to the topic. Um, that they, that you have, uh, you are working on in class. Mm -hmm. Okay, um, description game with music. So I use this game with A2 learners, let's say, because uh, the descriptions are with quite a lot of vocabulary. You can, of course, adapt it. Uh, simplify it for A1 and vice versa to push it for B2, uh, B2, no, B1 as well. So this game can kill two birds with one stone because you will do two things. You will practice description vocabulary and you will also discover music artists from the target culture. So if you are teaching English, you can get them to discover artists that they probably know already because it's English, but if you're teaching another language, uh, that can be a good way for them to get familiar with the culture of the language that they are studying. So a lot of kids don't know much about French artists. So for me, it's, it's great because it's showing them what, uh, what's going on in the French speaking, French speaking world. Um, so uh, I have the template I will show you after. So you're going to again uh, split up the students in teams, so according to uh, how many kids uh, you have in your class, I would say don't have teams with more than three or four students, because otherwise it's going to be messy. You will put on a music video on the screen, but you are not going to show it. So people will only listen at first. They won't see anything. They would see this thing. Let's say they wouldn't see uh, the video clip. And they will fill in a sheet to make assumptions on what the people look like. Um, so, Andres, can you, can you show the next? Uh, it's going to be more uh, concrete. Sorry again, in French. Um, so, we have two strips for a few different singers. So, we are only focusing on singers, but you can focus on whoever you want. Like, Robert and the drums, if you want. And here you have vocabulary. This vocabulary needs to have been studied before, of course. They need to know what things are. So here we, we have he is, she is, small, average size, tall, skinny, old, young, cut of hair. Um, if that person has a mustache, a beard, glasses, uh, the hairstyle, cut of eyes and the type of skin as well. So you have all that. Your students are only listening to the music and they will tick. 
they will take what they think it is. Of course, they're not going to get it right uh, because they don't know. Uh, they don't know. They don't know the artist. In Vietnam, it was quite funny when I was teaching there because students were not too familiar. They were young with the French culture, and so every singer looked like me. Like everybody <laughs> has the same color, uh, <laughs> color of hair, color of eyes, same height, same body type. But they, uh, they were me. Um, so they got the tick. They have to speak in French while they are doing it, or in English. And once it's done, they will have to make sentences to give me the answer. So I'm going to take, I don't know, red color for team one. So team one, each member will make a sentence. The singer is short. I will tick short here in red. The singer is blonde. I will tick blonde. Still in red. We will do all that so everybody gets to say something from the team. And then next team, I will take a different color and tick the answers as well making sentences compulsory, otherwise it's not accepted, and we do that for all the different teams. And then once we're done, we watch the video and we see who were right and who were wrong. So each right answer would give one point and we count all the number of points to see who's winning. So it's totally arbitrary. Uh, the idea is not to win because it's winning out of luck anyway. But it's a, it's a good way to learn about the culture and um, use vocabulary and then why not learn the song after that so usually when i do this activity we we'll do a three or uh, three four five different songs doesn't mean we're doing them all in one go we can do two or three songs one day and then again the next day i ask uh, it's also a way to ask them which song did you prefer uh, which song was your favorite why so on and so forth and then if there's one that's really stand out and if i think the lyrics are appropriate to the level why not why not learn it so it's leading to another activity as well online games so i'm going to show you two apps if i can do that on the on the screen so the first one lyrics training have you ever heard of it Okay, so I will show it to the people that don't know it. And maybe this one, Corrigemos. It's, um, it's designed initially for Spanish language, but they offer it for all these languages. So I don't know if we have Latin teachers. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, I will show you what it is. Can we please uh, open, uh, open the links? Right. Is it possible to send this presentation to our email? Sure, sure, sure. <laughs> Mm. Uh, no. But can't you can't you exit uh, this uh, uh, the screen? I mean, I can, uh, yeah, but it's not so. Can you put uh, our Spanish word? No, because the first page won't be. This is not working there. Another website. You want to do it? Yes, I want to do it. Yes. Sorry, guys. One second. The problem is we need to change the. No, 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 no. Okay. Ah, okay, okay. So that. Uh, so it's a website for uh, conjugating verbs. So only for that. It's only it's only for grammar. And let me show you. If I can. Uh, you got all the different tenses. Can you click on any tense? It's literally better if you Okay, so you have all these different games. Uh, I think there's maybe two or three which aren't acceptable. So I'll show you my favorite one. It's going to be a nightmare on the touching screen. But just to give you an idea. There it is. Okay, okay. Oh, no. So you need to move this thing, which I can't do that, on the touching screen. 
and then you go to the verb, the subject, and you need to pick the right form by moving it. And there are different games, all the tense is possible with all the languages that I've shown you. Not English, because you need a bit to be. <laughs> and um, uh, lyric training, the other website. Just type in uh, FR lyric training. So for the ones who don't know it, I don't know like um, what languages are you guys uh, teaching? English. Right, okay. <laughs> so, well, it's not for you. <laughs> so, uh, lyric trainings. So, why not in biology class if you find a song about plants? <sighs> May I? Okay, so let's take. Can you see? No, I can't see it just yet. Um, bon, it's not going away. So if you guys know it already, it's a karaoke website. So you uh, you put a song on, you will have the lyrics that will show with gaps. So you need to fill in the lyrics with the words that you uh, that you hear. And uh, and you got different levels, beginner, intermediate, advanced. You can pick the song, double check that the song is appropriate before playing it in terms of visuals and in terms of lyrics as well, because sometimes you can have awkward surprises. What does it mean, that word? Well, you don't want to know. <laughs> yeah, yeah, for instance, beginner. What's okay. that? Uh, let's see if this song is appropriate. No, 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 no. What? No, the, the, you, no, you do it. Ah, uh, I do it. Yes, thank you. Just once. <laughs> there you go. Uh, no, can you go now? You don't want to create an uh, account. Oh, no. <laughs> <gasps> ah, is it appropriate? No, it's not Ah, okay. <laughs> <laughs> So you see, you got the lyrics, something that you can hear, so that was going to be here. But that, that's okay. I knew I wouldn't shoot the entire period. Do you have any questions? Is there a game where you. Uh, yes? Merci beaucoup pour votre présentation. Merci à vous. I remember Andres, uh, last year's presentation, I think you were speaking about uh, English and bubble gas. Yes. Like that. And uh, I definitely have used all the strategies mm -hmm. you have suggested. I will <laughs> definitely use what Sarah you told us today. But my question maybe would be about your experience. like. Um, aren't like children or kids, students all together, aren't they getting used to all of those games and aren't they getting like, oh, that game's too boring today, like what we're going to have next time, like what is your experience with this gamification in the lesson? It's, uh, I try to vary them as much as I can, uh, so it would be, the idea is not to do all these games for one set of vocabulary, for one unit, no, so I think let's say for one unit I'm going to use a Kim game quite a lot, and then for the next unit, I'm going to use another one that will allow me to do the same thing, uh, um, to have the same objective, but through a different means. So no, no, I never use all of them uh, for one unit because otherwise it would be too much. And then, of course, yes, you have students who are like, ah, oh, again, but it's just uh, that's that, that the way it is. You could give them like the most amazing thing in the world, they would still find a way to complain. So <laughs> I'd say, you're welcome. I don't know if you have games that you would like to share that I didn't talk about. Mm -hmm. Do you have, do you have any? We have already shared. Ah, <laughs> <laughs> uh, okay. Do you have any games that they can play outside? Like, mm. that's why we do regular playing their leisure, playing outside. Oh, uh, you can do it outside. Things coming with the, with the 
outside you can uh, you can totally do it outside i don't know what uh, what age group uh, do you have high school high school uh, you could definitely do the drama game uh, with them outside i would even do even though it's a bit childish why not the treasure hunt outside uh, what else could be done and pe like i've done that a lot, uh, with my students like pe stuff outside because i will teach them all the vocabulary that they need before and then it's a real life experience so they're going to play basketball using french only and if they speak and if i hear one word of english they're out yeah yeah well yeah <laughs> so I, I would like to uh, add to what you were saying so for example here we celebrated a couple of uh, months uh, already uh, mother tongues uh, day so for that, what we use, uh, speaking of uh, trans languaging and, you know, switching and all. Um, so we actually made a, an activity for them in which they had to go for word hunting. So we had words in different uh, languages. Some were false friends, some, some were not. And so uh, we had a set of uh, words uh, uh, like makeup that in French and in Spanish, they sound more or less similar. So they were all all around, but then the the question was like how how do we make sure that they don't cheat because they will have access to this right? And so what we came up with is okay, so they will have this this um, um, chart to to fill out, but not all words in not all languages in this chart are distributed there. Mm -hmm. So if there is one language that was not you know pasted there outside so we know you cheated so you don't mm -hmm. get the points so uh, so yeah we had like pictures of words so just like picture let's say a sunflower and then we had five or six different languages so we had english russian ukrainian latvian spanish and french so and we posted flashcards with the words written in all of these languages all around school so they had this template to fill in so they knew, I don't know if they were Russian speakers, they knew how to say that. And then these words sounded the same, more or less the same, they could have guessed by the pronunciation, which one would be in the other, in their other languages. And uh, that could be done outside as well. And that, that was a big success. Yeah. So they had to walk around, try to find things, try to read them out. And... Uh, uh, yeah, yeah, they, uh, they love. There was a good activity, and in terms of prep, I mean, if you have a multilingual uh, team, it's quick uh, to uh, uh, to come up with all the words uh, in all these different uh, these different languages, and then it just flashcards. You go on Canva, in half an hour, it's done. You print them out. You don't even laminate because next year you're not going to use the same list of words if you want to do the same activity. So there's no point putting plastic on it. And you put it everywhere, and uh, and the kids, oh, they go with the teachers, walk around, and try uh, try try to find them. Mm -hmm. But that was more. I mean, the idea wasn't to teach vocabulary; it was just to bring like uh, open-mindedness, yeah. let's say, to be like, well, and maybe why not to talk about uh, families of languages? So you can see French and Spanish; they sound the same because they are from the mm -hmm. same language family. That could be. Yeah, so we took words like trottoir, pavements. It's kind of a words because that works in 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 uh, in, uh, in most uh, in most languages. Mm -hmm. So yeah, mm -hmm. I think that's it for me. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. Thank you.